would you do first if your doctor told you that you only had one day to live? After you caught your breath, would you look up to heaven and say, Oh Lord, I really need you. Because you really do need Him. The title of this message is The Transformed Mind. The Transformed Mind. At the close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make the greatest decision that a spiritually lost person can ever make. And that is the decision to repent of your sins and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith. For some time now, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you about this matter of conversion. And today is your date with destiny. Today is the day for you to give your heart and give your life to the Lord Jesus. Our text for this message is found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, the transformed mind. The Apostle Paul states, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Euodia and I implore Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Would you pray with me? Father, in Christ's name, we thank you that before the foundation of the world, you knew that we would be here today. I'm aware of the assignment that is before me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Father, I pray that not one word will leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Christ's name I pray, amen. The transformed mind. When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will then be transformed by the power of God. Today, allow Christ to transform your heart and then He will transform your mind. And when you do, your thought processes will be different. Peace comes through thinking positive thoughts. The word think means to consider, reflect, to reason, and to ponder. The idea is that of focusing our thoughts until they shape our behavior. The truth is simply this. What we think is what we become. Where we have kept our minds is where we are. Our thoughts shape our behavior, and what we do is what we think. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Dr. William Barclay states, and I quote, It is the law of life that if a man thinks of something often enough and long enough, he will come to the stage when he cannot stop thinking about it. His thoughts will be quite literally in a groove out of which he cannot jerk them. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. The person who centers their thoughts upon the world and its things will live for the world and the things of the world like money, wealth, land, property, houses, possessions, position, power, recognition, honor, social standing, fame, and a host of other worldly pursuits. Very simply stated, a person who centers his thoughts upon the flesh and its lust will live to satisfy their flesh through such things as pride, self, greed, pleasure, and sex. A person who centers their thoughts upon their eyes and the lust of their eyes will live to satisfy their eyes and their lust through such things as the immoral, 
pornographic filth flaunted in magazines, films, books, and television, the exposing of the human body, dressing to attract attention, looking a second time. A person who centers his thoughts upon the pride of life will live to satisfy such things as the desire for recognition, honor, position, and authority. A mind set upon the world and the flesh is what leads to anxiety and worry, emptiness and restlessness. This is what Philippians 4, 6 and 7 has to say. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. For a worldly mind never knows peace. A worldly mind never knows true peace, not the peace of God. God will just never allow a worldly mind to have peace, for it is the restlessness of the human soul that God reaches, uses to reach men for salvation. Dennis Rodman, the famous basketball player, was interviewed by Barbara Walters a number of years ago, and she said, Mr. Rodman, you've had sex with some of the most beautiful women in the world. You have anything that money can buy. Is there anything, Mr. Dennis Rodman, that you do not have in this life that you would like to have? And Dennis Rodman responded to Barbara Walters' question like this, and I quote, Yes, ma'am, I want me some peace. Yes, ma'am, I want me some peace. End of quote. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 57, verses 20 and 21, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. The point is simply this. When a person repents of their sins and accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior by faith, their mind is renewed by the Spirit of God. Have you reached the point in your life where you're tired of your mind being tormented by your sinful lifestyle? Today is the day for you to turn it all over to the Lord Jesus. I plead with you with everything that is within me today to repent of your sins and give your heart and give your life to Christ today. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. The Bible states in Romans chapter 12, Verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Apostle Paul also states in Ephesians chapter 4, Verses 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And then in Colossians 3.10, Paul states, And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. The Apostle Paul talks about the new man in all of these verses. The new man is the natural man who's been born again. The only way to have a renewed, a transformed mind is to be born again. To be born again means to be born from above. Jesus told Nicodemus, a religious leader, that he had to be born again. He had to experience the new birth before he could ever enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that we are all sinners. We have inherited the sin nature of Adam and Eve. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross for our sins in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And the Bible says in Acts 3, 19, to be born again, you must repent. 
Repent means to ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. You change your mind about your sins and you turn from your sins. In Acts 3.19, the Bible says, Repent and be converted that your sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Christ cleanses you and forgives you of all of your sins when you truly repent, just as if you had never, ever sinned. And the Bible says to be born again, you must accept Christ by faith. Faith is believing even though you cannot see. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and for me that we do not deserve. And because of His love for you and for me that we do not deserve, and our faith in Him, we can be saved. We can't save ourselves. No one can save us. Only Jesus can save us from our sins. And then the Bible says that to be born again, you must believe that Jesus lived in this life as we know it today. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried in a barred tomb for three days, and after three days, God brought him back to life. That's called the resurrection. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then to be born again, you must believe that anyone, anyone can be saved. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do is to call on the name of Jesus today and ask Him to be your Lord and Savior by faith. He will never reject you. He will never turn His back on you. Today at the close of this message, I plead with you with all that is within me today, repent of your sins and give your heart and give your life to Christ. And He will not only transform your heart, but He will transform your mind today. Jesus loves you. He loves me today. He cares about us today. What was he thinking? How did he think while he was on that cross dying for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world? The famous song says this, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. Once a person has been converted to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a new creation. Our thoughts are then focused upon the good things of life and upon God. We give our mind to positive thinking. In fact, we think, we will think only positive thoughts if we will allow God to work in our mind. The believer is to work at not allowing an immoral, fleshly, worldly, selfish, sinful, or evil thought to enter their mind. There's never to be a negative thought whatsoever in the mind of the believer. Sinful and negative thoughts disrupt and destroy our peace. For this reason, we as followers of Christ are to struggle, and it is a struggle, to conquer our mind and to conquer our thoughts we're to exert every cell of energy possible to captivate and control every thought. Because what we think is so important that God tells us we are what we think. In Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The transformed mind. Has your mind been transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, then your mind will be transformed. There's an old saying, and I quote, birds can fly over our head and land on it, but we do not have to let them nest in it. Birds can fly over our head and land on it, but we do not have to allow them to nest in it. 
End of quote. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 through 20, Jesus makes it very clear. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will then be transformed. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. And let's look at this verse very deeply. In Philippians 4 8, the Apostle Paul states, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Whatever things are true, that means real, genuine. Many things in the world seem to be true, but they're not. They're false, they're deceptive, they're just an illusion, and they're a counterfeit. They seem to offer us peace, but what they offer is a deceptive, a counterfeit peace, only escapism. We're to keep our minds upon things that are true, and we're to live lives that are true to both men and to God. When our thoughts and our lives are centered upon true things, peace will then come into our hearts. And then in Philippians 4, 8, Paul states, whatever things are noble, whatever things are noble, that means honorable, worthy, revered, highly respected, noble. William Barclay states, and I quote, the word really describes that which has the dignity of holiness upon it. There are things in this world, he states, which are flippant and cheap, things which are attractive to the like-minded, but it is on the things which are grave and serious and dignified that the Christian will set his mind. End of quote. And then the Apostle Paul states in Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are just. Whatever things are just. This means right. Righteous behavior. It has to do with right behavior toward our fellow man and toward our God. The believer, the follower of Christ, is to keep their thoughts upon their duty toward men and toward their God, upon doing what is right toward both of them. Man is to be a responsible being while on earth. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. Make that decision today. Don't put it off any longer. To give your heart, to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Micah tells us in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Man is to re be responsible for this earth, for his fellow human beings, and we are held accountable to God for both. Therefore, we're not to focus our thoughts upon comfort, upon our selfish pleasures, upon our own pursuits. We're to focus our thoughts upon the things that are just, the things that are righteous. We owe our thoughts and our mind to God, to this world, to our fellow man. And we're to do what God directs us to do with our lives. We are to owe whatever contribution we can make to our God and to the world in which we live to make it a better place and for people to live in. A mind filled with just and righteous thoughts will always have the peace of Christ. Do you have the peace of Christ in your heart and in your mind today? The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Are you trusting in Christ? Is all your faith in him and in him alone when it is 
and you trust Him, you put all your faith in Him, your mind will be at peace with Him and with your fellow man. And then Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are pure, whatever things are pure, this means to be morally clean, spotless, stainless, chaste, undefiled, free from moral pollution, filth, dirt, and impurities. The, the mind of the Christian and the thoughts of the Christian are to be pure every thought. And then Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are lovely, this means pleasing, winsome, kind, gracious, things that excite love, things that excite kindness. The Christian's thoughts are not to be thoughts of unkindness and meanness, grumbling and murmuring, criticism and reaction. The Christian's thoughts are to be focused upon things that are lovely, that build people up, not to tear people down. Many years ago, the Republican National Convention had a brilliant young attorney who worked for them. He was their hack. He's the man who did a hack job on the enemies of the Republicans, and his name was Lee Atwater. Lee Atwater was a brilliant young attorney, and he was climbing the political ranks. And one day, he learned that he had an inoperable brain tumor and that he was going to die. Someone who is deeply in love with the Lord Jesus came to visit with Lee Atwater because they had learned that he was dying. And, and this individual told Lee Atwater about the love of Christ. They told Lee Atwater about Jesus dying on the cross for his sins. And before Lee Atwater passed from this temporary life as we know it today into eternity, Lee Atwater prayed and he repented of his sins, and he asked Christ to cleanse him and forgive him, and he did. And before Lee Atwater died, he said this, and I quote, I don't hate anymore. I don't hate anymore. Lee Atwater's heart was supernaturally transformed by the power of God, and then his mind was transformed by the power of God. He said, I don't hate anymore. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. And then in Philippians 4, 8, Paul says, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are of good report, this means reputable, high-toned, worthy things, things of the highest quality. The believer is to think only upon worthy things. We're not to fill our minds with junk. We're not to listen to bad reports, no matter how juicy they may seem. We're not to fill our mind with junk, with music, with off-color jokes, or by whatever source. Our thoughts are to be focused only upon worthy things, only upon that which is of good report. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God when your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. And then the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 8, if there's any virtue, meaning excellence, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meaning in any thought, he says, meditate on these things. Positive thinking is the answer to peace for the Christian believer. In Philippians 4, 9, Paul states, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me these do, and the God of peace will be with you. When you do, as Paul teaches in Philippians 4, verse 8, you'll have the peace of God not only in your heart, but in your mind also. There's a word of God here. There's a word from God. We're to think, we're to practice positive thinking. And we see the source of our power for positive thinking, that it is twofold. You've got the Word of God. Paul tells us in verse 9, he said, I've preached and I've taught the very virtues of positive thinking to the Philippians, and they have learned them. And what Paul had preached and taught was the will of God. Therefore, the source, the power for positive thinking comes from the Word of God. It is the Word of God that a person finds to be things that are to fill our mind. Our thoughts are to be upon the teachings of the Word of God. Paul states in Colossians 3.16, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The transformed mind. When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, then your mind will also be transformed. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4.12, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Psalm 19.8, the Bible states, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The Bible says in Psalm 119.11, Your word have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. The transformed mind. Has your mind been supernaturally transformed by the power of God? When your heart has been supernaturally transformed by the power of God, your mind will also be transformed. Right there where you are today, you have become sick and tired of being sick and tired of the way that you're living. Because the life, the sinful life that you're living is indicative of the sin that's in your heart today. You can't think great thoughts upon God, upon your fellow man, because your life is full of sin, because you've never been born from above. You've never been born again. And today is your date with destiny. Today is the day for you to give your heart and for you to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right there where you are right now. Just stop what you're doing. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you for some time about this matter of conversion, of being transformed by the power of God in your heart. And I want you to pray with me right now. He loves you and He's waiting on you with His arms open wide. You pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, that's right, just between you and Him. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You've been supernaturally transformed by the power of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven where it will never be erased. You write to me today and let me know of your decision. I have some materials that I want to send to you. And be sure and get involved in a good balanced Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. God bless you. I love you.